Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night service. Stand with me and sing number 228. He hideth my soul. Hopefully we'll have the words up there soon. Father, thank you for letting us meet here tonight and learn more of your word. What we learn tonight, may we apply it to our daily lives. Be with all those people that are in the path of this storm that's coming up. May they take measures to be safe and watch the power of God. This we pray through Christ's name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Did you 
and we're in it strange. I have people calling. They'll go, you guys all right with the hurricane? Now, I'm, I know this around the sense, but I'm just hoping we get some of the water off of it. Amen. And so I said, you understand we're so far away. We're praying that some of the water comes up here. And so that's kind of hard for folks that live in other places to, to understand that. But there are a lot. And they said uh, today it's rocking at the northern part of a category four when it's coming in about that. It's fast moving. That means what it comes across, it'll be um, a lot of tornado damage and stuff coming out of that. So you um, got folks in that area. I don't know how they're doing and all of it. I've been praying for people all day. I, I have folks in South Texas and stuff over around about where they think it'll hit, but they believe Houston's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty safe it, it, because it'll be like on the other side of the wind. Okay, it turns. So anyhow, but there are a lot of displaced people, and I did hear today that they, because of the hotels are pretty much empty, they're letting people uh, evacuate into those because they're not going to put them in mass shelters. You know that's what we normally do uh, for them to stay. So that's not going to happen. So. A different times, different situation. We're glad for that. We'll talk about our prayer request when we get through the services tonight and before we're dismissed. We're glad to have Brother Bob come back with us. I told him for church. I'm looking forward to hearing him preach now that he's older. You know, he had a birthday last week. Amen. And so, Brother Bob, come preach to us what God lays on your heart. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, hello, Baptist Church. Good to be here with you this evening. Uh, Preaching God's Word, and I thought we'd go ahead and get to the lesson. So you can go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to start out there. And, uh, so I used to, uh, we talked about this a little bit lately, you know, I used to not like to name my sermon as well. I'm just doing it all the time. You know, so I'm going to just say, here's the name of the sermon. It's uh, One Day at a Time. And, uh, I'm sure you all have heard that before. We've got to live life one day at a time. And, yeah. and uh, well, of course, literally we have to because we're only in one day at a time. And obviously that's not what the saying means. It means to have your focus just on today, not worrying about the unknown future and, uh, and just not letting the problems from the past, you know, affect you. Just focusing on what you can do. And the only thing, only time you can do things in is the present. So today is, is uh, the day that we can do something about right now. Yes. We have no idea what, it seems like more than ever, we have no idea what tomorrow might look like. Mm -hmm. But, you know, God, uh, Jesus tells us in his word not to worry. We're going to look at that in, in uh, chapter 6. So you ready to turn there? Um, so chapter 6 of, of Matthew um, is, is really cool. There's a lot of big, big things in there. And you can preach a sermon on each individual piece if you want to, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna do that. So the, the first, I'm just gonna summarize the first part of it. And it, you know, Jesus talks about uh, giving and the right way to give. He talks about praying and the right way to um, to pray. He talks about fasting and the right way to talk about fasting. And he talks about laying up treasures. And the right way to lay up treasures, of course, you know, it's going to be laying up the treasures for heaven and not not for here. And in a in each one of those things. So if we started with the giving, is it good to give? Sure, it is. It's a it's a good thing to give. But there's a right way to give, and you could say a wrong way, or for sure, a less right way to give. So when when we give, we're supposed to be, and all four of these things, by the way, we're supposed to be exalting. God in it. Amen. So almost in anything you do um, for your uh, in service for God, it's a good thing to think about who am I trying to exalt right now. So we talked about the um, giving, the praying, the uh, fasting, and uh, which one I just missed? Giving, praying, fasting, whatever. Um, who am I trying to exalt here? And and I'll th there's not in this chapter, but I could even throw in preaching. In that when, I, when I'm preaching, a lot of times I got to be careful. Or when I'm writing a message, oh no, I, I don't know if I want to say this. And then sometimes I think, well, who am I trying to impress? Or am I trying to impress anybody here? And the, and the fact is, no, I need to do what, what God tells me and to go by His leading. So 
it gives those examples there, but in general in, in life, when you're out there serving the Lord, whether it's in the back there teaching or whatever it is that you're doing for the Lord, you got to make sure that it that it lifts God up. And wh when you think about the lifting someone up or lifting yourself up, it's, it's like, it's, can't do it in this auditorium, but if I would stand up on, on this mm -hmm. and be really high, what would be a purpose of that typically is so that everybody can see me. And I could be the ones that's that seen. So when we do things, we're not supposed to lift up ourselves so everybody can see, wow, what a great person so-and-so is, but that we could see what a great God that they serve. And we're always supposed to be lifting up God. So for those things, he talks about the giving. So it's not like I'm, when I give something, I want to make sure everybody sees me when I give it. Or I want to talk, I, I, don't, I just want to do the, the giving. I want everybody to know about it too and that kind of stuff. And then the, the, in, the, in the prayer life, he uses the same thing about vain repetition and, and so forth. That's not the way. Then he gives us the perfect example of how to pray in, in the Lord's Prayer. And, and with fasting, we're not supposed to look all sick and tell, oh, I'm, I'm, I stopped eating for the Lord and, and all that kind of stuff. But we're supposed to clean ourselves up and look presentable and, and do that. We don't even have to tell somebody. That's a hard thing to do, isn't it? To do something good and not tell anybody because yeah. we always want to, to get some of the credit too. So those are some of the, the challenges that are there. So it's, you know, who are you putting your focus on? Well, there's a reason why I'm, I'm summarizing this and the reason why I'm bringing up that first part is because now I want to get into um, the rest of it. So in, in verse 25, he says, therefore, and, and just like when you see the word therefore, you got to see what it's there for. So I kind of wanted to summarize what he was just talking about. Oh, the laying up the treasures. That was the other one I, I forgot to say. Um, it's not wrong to lay up treasures if you're laying up the right treasures, the treasures that will last. And, and Jesus talks about all these things. And, and at the end, of, I'll say the end of verse 24, he says, you cannot serve God and mammon, the thing, just all the things of this world. It's going to be God or the things of this, this world that comes and the things that go with it and all that fame, money, things, cars, boats, and all that. It's not wrong to have things, but it's who's, who's your focus on? Who are you lifting up with your life? So in verse 25, he says, therefore. So it says, therefore, after saying all that he said, and by the way, you, you go read this again one day. And I could only imagine how much it would take to have this flow out of your mouth automatically without a great study. And, you know, you, when you're writing a message, how, how hard it is, and you want to have things in the right order, you want to have the right speech, you want to have all these things right. And the Lord Jesus can just speak these Amen. like that. That is so incredible in itself. And he lays out the ideas in the proper order. And all that he had already in mind to say, therefore. Mm -hmm. So all that stuff that he was bringing up wasn't an accident. And, and so he says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. I'm in verse 25, by the way. I'll start it again. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the uh, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? I always thought it was interesting how he says one cubit. That's quite a bit to add to your stature, you know. Uh, I, I wouldn't even mind just a couple inches, you know, yeah. to my stature. I'd be you know, kind of happy with that. Uh, but, but to make it perfectly clear, which one of you can could add a foot and a half or so to your height uh, by worrying about it? You can't do that, right? So he says, and why take ye thought for the raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? 
Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith uh, with all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles see. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But here we go. And, and I'm not going to end with this. This is sometimes a good point for ending of, of a sermon, but but this is this is a kicker. You know what? I might end up end this with this verse anyway, but I'm not going to end it right now. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see how that all flowed together? So he's talking about uh, the pr- uh, about the giving and the right way to give, the praying and the right way to pray, and the fasting and the right way to fast, and and even the the laying of treasures and and how to do that and all that. There's a right way to do that. But first, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 34, because today's sermon is one day at a time. I want to look at verse 34. He said, Take therefore no thought for the the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And we all kind of know we got enough problems today to keep us plenty busy, right? You got enough problems today to keep you plenty busy, but we can't help adding things which we have no control over, which things we don't even know how it's going to turn out or if it's going to come about. A lot of the problems that we worry about that are in the future don't even happen. And we spend a lot of time worrying about those kind of things. We shouldn't be putting our energy into there. And that's what I think it is to to live one day at a time. It's like your focus. And and another another thing I was going to say is a day, have you ever considered a day and how cool that is? To, To me it is anyway, and I'll explain why I think that. Every and, and I know some people do different shifts and all that. Before the normal shift or whatever, most people go to sleep at night and they wake up in the morning and it's a new day. And things look different. It's a great, you know, when we're sleeping, we have regeneration going on in our body. We have, you know, repairs being made. Uh, our, our hormones are regulated at night. And, uh, also, it's it's a good thing. To, it's when we process a lot of our memories, and and, uh, and we just wake up feeling rejuvenated. Whether or not we know the science behind it, because there's a lot of a lot of it's just theory anyway. But whether we know the science behind it or not, we know after a good night's sleep, you feel better. And there's been days where that are stressful, and we get a good night's sleep, and the next day is a new day. Here, here, here's one that I like. I like the the day is day is really a cool grouping of time. It's not. Uh, let's you know for the next eighteen hours we say for today, and and uh, there's times, and I think we all go through this where we feel we disappointed God. You know, we've done something that we're not proud of. We're we're ashamed of it or whatever it is. Or I should have done this different. I should have done that. And then the night happens, and you wake up, and you can have, not you don't always happen, but you can have a new outlook on it. It's a new day. And, you know, we take up our cross how often? We, we take it up daily. Yeah. And, we, and it's daily that we have to fight the battles of the flesh. It's every day something's coming up like that. But every day is a new day and an opportunity for us to do better. You know, you know. Yesterday, I I didn't do as well as I wanted. You might say, well, today, every day you wake up is a new day. I don't think that that's a coincidence. I don't see it explicitly written like the like that. But God did make us, and He made us to sleep at night, and He made us to get up the next day, and now we have a new day at, at looking at things. So the you know the things that we done yesterday and and previous, we don't have to focus on those. But here's one thing I wanted to say. So he's talking he, in the in this last part here. He talks about sufficient is the problems of today, so we don't have to worry about the problems of the future. He doesn't talk too much about the past here, but the Bible does have some things to say about the past as well. We're not, although we're not supposed to dwell in the past and just and let that be another burden that we have, but we can certainly learn from the past, Amen. and uh, we can learn. 
and we can gain wisdom and we can gain experience and all that. So I want to also talk, we're talking about one day at a time. We talked about how we focus on today. There's enough problems that we have today and how we're not supposed to worry about the problems of tomorrow. So I'd like to talk a little bit about, I'll say yesterday, but I don't mean necessarily the period of 24 hours yesterday. I mean, in, in our past. So let's go ahead and take a little bit of look at uh, look at the past. What what is the Bible? What are a few examples of that? I'm, one of my favorite to look at is Psalms forty. So I'll give you a second to turn there. Psalms forty, and I'm and and I've preached on this before. There's a lot going on there, but we're going to quickly just take a look at this from a, a perspective of how we can learn things from our past and our experiences, how we can grow from those kind of things. And, there, and, and we'll see a little bit of a, a cycle of growth. So in verse 1, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord. And I'm going to come back to that. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me. He heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and establish my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. So that, that is, a, it sounds like a bad experience at first, you could think. If you have a walk with the Lord, and, you let, and you're following where, where God leads you, you can still find peace in those situations, and it might not make any sense to the rest of the world, but it can to you. And and uh, here he says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined my ears. So uh, we often joke about how don't really want to pray for patience, but patience isn't a bad thing. I'm not asking, uh, tribulation is a good thing, but I'm not asking for, for that either. But if you could turn with me to Romans chapter 5. I think that's where I want to go. Yes. We're going to look at some, something here, which is kind of that, that verse we, uh, in uh, Psalms 40 that we just read. Let's take a look at chapter 5 in Romans now. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of, of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience. You got both tribulation and patience right there, right? And patience, experience. And experience, hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So when we were looking at Psalms 40, it started off with, I was I waited patiently for the Lord. And you have to wonder, how do you wait patiently on the Lord? How does that come about that you're in the position in your life where you're in a, a tribulation? It has to be a great tribulation to be calling it a miry pit. That's a bad time, right? He was waiting patiently on the Lord. Well, I think the first time you go through tribulation, you might not be waiting that patiently for the Lord. But it's a cycle. You know, you get brought through some kind of tribulation, some kind of challenge in your life, some hard time in your life, and you see, and and then maybe at first it takes you some time, days, weeks, months, years, and then finally you call upon the Lord. And then, you, then, and then you wait, and you don't get your prayer answered, and you wait, and you don't get your prayer answered, you don't think. And then all of a sudden, God works something in, and you could say, God, God was looking out for me. Mm -hmm. And then another tribulation comes up. And, th and this time, you, you gained a little bit here. So if I go back to verse 3 in, in Romans chapter 5, and it's talked about knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. So now you have a little bit more patience because you're in another tribulation, which, work, which, which brings forth experience, 
not just any experience like job experience or you know experience in engineering or anything like that the experience of having god work in your life and making a difference it brings you hope and then another tribulation comes along and you like you know god's brought me out of two tribulations already i think i'm just going to wait patiently on the lord for his timing i'm going to call out for help and i'm just going to wait and it might be longer than i would like but I can trust the Lord. And you build that trust over time. So this, if you read Romans chapter 5, you just see this cycle that keeps happening. It keeps happening. And the more you trust God, the more you go through this cycle again, and then the more you trust God each time until you find yourself in a place, hopefully, where you can come across a great tri tribulation, a spouse dying or, or, or you know, a child dying or something you know, very grievous, and you can handle it. Because hey, God's brought me out of so much before. He's done so many things for me before. He could take me this out of this too. So just forgetting our past isn't a good thing. We can remember those things and we can build on that, on those, build patience, build experience, and build hope. Now we're in Romans chapter 5. I, I got another example, but I'm gonna, I, while we're here, I'd like to, to read on a little bit. I'll go down to verse verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Not only do we have hope, we got a great hope in a faithful God who Amen. won't let us down. That's right. and, and that's God's word. Sometimes, though, we need these experiences in our life to see that. And it, there's another one I won't have you, have you turn there. There's, there's a couple different things. Moses did it. Joshua did it. Where they brought up all the things that God has done for the nation of Israel and the things that they should remember he's done. And some of those came with warnings and, you know, and, and stuff like that too. But it's like, remember this, remember what God has done for you, where God reminds us, this might sound funny. He reminds us not to forget. And so, you know, we shouldn't forget to remember the right. things that God has done for us. And not only that, you know, it, it, Deuteronomy tells us to teach those things to our kids. That's how important it is for, for us to, to have this. But I, that's not, I, I don't want to turn there right now, but I would like to uh, turn to 1 Corinthians 11.24. And here's something to remember, and I'm sure we're going to go be talking about more about something like this on, on Sunday. Commun we're doing communion on Sunday, right, Pastor? So... Here's something that, that Jesus wants us to remember. So uh, verse 24, when he had given thanks, he break it. And he's talking about the bread there. I'll back up to 23. For I have received of the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup, and he had, uh, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink. Drink it in remembrance of me. Even the Old Testament Passover was done, well, that was done annually. But it was, it was to, to remember, a, a, even that was a, a token of what was to come. But it was a, to remember that. And then Jesus Christ, before he was crucified, told us what was going on with this sacrifice. He went and died on the cross and shed his blood. And it wasn't just, just oh, look, I'm dying for you. It was because of the necessity of it that he died for our sins and paid the price for our sins, and made forgiveness available to us, where we can call upon the name of the Lord, and we just, we just, by faith, ask Him. 
and he saves us. Based on the fact of what happened about 2,000 years ago, we're still preaching and teaching the same message today after these 2,000 years. Amen. And, and, and uh, Sunday we're going to remember that as well. Now, it's not that we forgot that this happened. You, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like if, if we skip three years of doing communion, it's not that we're like, what do we do communion again for? I mean, it, it's it definitely a refresher and all that. But we're doing it to remember it intentionally. So if we were a computer, which we're not, but if we were a computer, we'd have all kinds of information stored in memory, uh, physical memory, the hard drive. And when it's needed, we recall it. So we have that knowledge, but we bring it to remembrance and we recall it on purpose, intentionally. We, we don't want to forget to remember what God has done for us. So we, we do this communion that we're going to do on Sunday to remember what Jesus did and the significance of it and what it brings to us. And we do that. So today's the, the only day we could actually do stuff about things. So if you don't know Christ as your Savior and Lord, today could be the day where you choose to accept Christ. The things you did in the past, you can't, you know, the mistakes you made in the past, you can't go back and correct those mistakes that you've done in your past. But today you could lay that upon the Lord Jesus Christ and let him take care of it. We can't control what the future is, but we can trust the person who has control in the future. Amen. So today we can worship, we can serve the Lord with the right heart and the right attitude. Now I am going to turn back to Matthew chapter 6. And uh, I said I, wasn't, I, I, I might end there, so I'm going to go back to that. you got to get the right focus. And then it, it takes away the worries of our past and it takes away the worries of the future Amen. when you focus on the right thing and you focus on Jesus. You can do the right things the wrong way and you don't receive that same power. If you look, you know, it talked about the prayer there, about that vain repetition and how it was without power. But when you do it with the right heart, the right attitude for the right reasons, the way that Jesus told us to do it, it has power with it. And then, then in verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for, that you're such a great God, Lord. Amen. Lord, that you, you have things for us to do, Lord, that bring honor and glory to you, Lord, but somehow they're always good for us too. The things that you have for us, Lord, they're, they're not a, a grievance to us. They're not a pressure to us, Lord. They're the things that's going to bring us comfort and peace in this world. Amen. Lord, help us, Lord, to, to always focus on you, Lord. And that, Lord, by keeping our eyes on you, Lord, we don't have to worry about all the things in the world going on, just like Peter walking on the water, Lord. It wasn't until he took his eyes off of you and looked at the waves, Lord, that he lost focus and started to sink. Lord, help us, Lord, to keep our focus on you and know that you're in control of everything and that you love us. Lord, I pray for my church. I pray, Lord, I pray for my country. And Lord, I pray for Israel. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you help us, Lord, to turn back to you. And I ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
the Lord of prayer, please. Our God and our Father, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you do provide the way for us, Lord. And just help us, Lord, to uh, be willing, Lord, to, to watch and see, Lord, what you do as you take us through things. Help us, Lord, to have the, the faith to rely on you. We thank you for your promises of watching over us, taking care of us, and leading us through things that we have to go through, Lord. As it makes us stronger, Lord, help us to, uh, to grow in you. Help us, Lord, to be what we should be, Lord, for you. In Christ's name we pray and ask it. Amen. Amen.